for an entire page but for a piece of data. And it gets that data back and it gets delivered back to the client and the client can then format it and display it. All right. Again, this allows a page to be updated and not in a trivial manner but in a significant manner with some significant content without having to redisplay the entire page. Now, if we think about it, there's a couple good things with regards to mobile applications in this. Number one, remember with a mobile device, typically the connection to the internet is going to be slower. All right? So to redraw the entire page is typically going to be a bigger deal than it would be on a desktop machine. All right. So the fact that we're not refreshing the whole page but just refreshing it maybe with pieces of data is actually sort of good news from a mobile perspective. All right. The other reason it's good from a mobile perspective is remember when we talked about creating using PhoneGap build we needed HTML pages. Well HTML pages as great as they are can't do the heavy lifting that a server side script can do. So we still, if we're going to do a robust application, we still need some sort of server component to do the hard work, all right, to do the stuff in PHP, all right, or, or other server-side technologies. Well, with an AJAX, again, we can write a small HTML front end that accesses scripts on the server to supply the data, and we still can then convert that using PhoneGap build or PhoneGap into a native mobile application. So we get around sort of the issue that um, we can only access HTML pages if we want to do uh, a phone gap build by saying, yeah, the client only has HTML pages. It calls stuff on the server to sort of fill in the gaps, but the app itself is built of HTML pages. That's something that would be good to test. I haven't actually tested it, but I'm 99% I'm sure that it would work. Well, wait, I'm more sure than that that it will work. I have actually tested that now that I think of it. I used a, I created a, a PhoneGap build application that did something very similar to what we did with Yahoo, where it parsed a news feed, an RSS news feed, and, uh, and displayed it within an app. And that was all done via PhoneGap build. Let me go and bring down a sample Ajax application. And we'll run it and we'll take a look at it. I'm missing a file.
I have some debug code in here. I'm going to go back and remove that. Okay. All right. This is a little Ajax application. And again, if you notice this, the page never reloads. You can check the status bar or anything like that. Yet it's obviously pulling data from a server. I guess I say obvious. Maybe that isn't so obvious. But um, it is. The, 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 the data of terms, of mathematical terms, is not... Uh, uh, part of the client application. In fact, if we, when we initially load this page, if we look at the HTML source, it's not like we see all those terms that pop up. So that it's getting them from somewhere else. All right? And it's getting them from the server. This is very similar to what we have in Google where as you start to type the search term in, you get a list of the most popular search terms that match the string that you've typed in. The only difference is, is this is a table of mathematical terms that um, as we type a letter in, it shows a list of the mathematical terms. If we click on one of them, then click go, we get the translation of it in Spanish. So it's almost like a little dictionary app. Now in a full-blown version of this app, um, the PHP code would likely have a, a database component to it. It wouldn't do it the way I, I did it. But in this particular case, the glossary of mathematical terms, there was only, I don't know, maybe a few hundred terms in it. So I was able to do it without a database just so that we don't have to worry about that. All right. Let's take a look at the PHP piece of this. And then we'll bring it together to look at the HTML. All right. The PHP has an include file. All right. That include file, that dictionary include file contains a list of mathematical terms and their Spanish uh, equivalent, their Spanish translation. So here's all the list of the mathematical terms that get put into the array A English and then corresponding to this is the translated term. So in other words, the first element of the English array, the Spanish translation of it, is the first element of the Spanish array. So they match up going all the way down. All right. So we have two of these arrays. And that's all that's in this include file. We create these. Again, in a larger, if we we're going to do like say a full-blown English to Spanish translation, we would uh, we'd probably pull this from a database. But because this is limited to I don't remember exactly. I can look, I suppose. <coughs> Looks like there's 400 or so terms because there's 830 uh, lines in the whole script. Um, it was easy enough to do it this way. In reality, what I did is I just did a little fancy cutting and pasting off of, off of a website that had a table of these two, and then I created the, the code that way. All right, so we have these two arrays. This line grabs from the query string the word that I'm requesting, or the word or part of a word that I'm requesting. So in other words, if I were to type in AB, 
the query string would have AB labeled as word. This then goes and loops through those English arrays, sees if the English array matches up with the string that I've requested. If it does, I create an XML node for that item. If not, I skip it. When I'm all done, I output the results. So this is very straightforward code. We simply grab from the query string what the user has asked for, we loop through the array, and we output the XML of the items that match what the user has typed into the text box. Now, um, if they didn't find anything, we output that there's no match for the term. Now, one thing that's key to do in, in AJAX, when I'm doing this typically, if I'm creating an AJAX application like this, it's important to test each piece before you try to test everything together. All right? AJAX is sort of a more involved dance between the client and server, right? So instead of the client asking for a page, getting back a whole page, the client is asking for a piece of data, getting back a piece of data, and then the page is being refreshed with the results. So that's a more involved or nuanced uh, interaction between the client and the server. To make sure that something like this works, I typically will test each piece individually and then test the stuff that works together. So what I did here is I can actually test the server-side script outside of the AJAX application simply by typing in the URL. The name of this file is dictionary1.php and it's expecting on the query string a value called word. So I can type in http localhost dictionary1.php word equals a. And boom, that's the XML I get back. So, were I developing this from scratch, I would look at that and are those all the words that start with A? Yeah, then I did it right. I could test it for like AB. And is that the, all the words that start with AB? Yes, it is. I did that right. The idea here is I'm first making sure that this component is working. Now, no one's ever going to run this in the real world like this. This is just for my testing, that I'm testing to make sure that if this script gets what it's expecting, is it going to return the proper results? And in this case it does, so I'm sort of done with the, with the server-side script. Really, most of the action in AJAX happens on the client side. All right, Because the server's role is sort of cut down a little bit. The server is no longer responsible for developing the whole page. It's just responsible for, for spitting out some data. So that's exactly what we're doing here is we're spitting out some data. You know, if the user gives a C, we prepare a list of all the words that start with C that we can return. So that's about it from the server's perspective. It does whatever it needs to do. It takes the request from the client, which includes the word or part of the word that's being searched for. It does its thing, and then it returns a chunk of XML. All right. So the server's job is actually less than it was before, because it's not drawing a whole new web page. It's just um, returning a chunk of data. Now that I've ensured that this part works, I can start working on the client side. All right. If we're going to define the roles here, the client's role is to format and make the request of the server. I'll put a C here because that's the client. The server's job is to 
take request and any parameters that get passed, process and return some data, not a whole page. The client's job then is to take the resultant data and refresh screen. So, we've looked at this part of it. We found that our server-side code, if we request that script and we give it a query string that contains word in it, that it will properly parse through those arrays and return the XML for all those matching words. So, the name of the URL is this. where that little blank for word is going to get filled in based on the value of the text box. Okay, we're done with the server now. All right, we will really don't need to look at it again, at least for this part of it. All right. Let's look at the client then. And when we look at the client, we're going to want to do two things. We're going to want to We're going to want to make sure that this prepares the request correctly, then we're going to want to make sure that we process the result correctly. All right, let's first look at how this prepares the request. Now remember how typically JavaScript works. Typically client-side scripting works based on the user does something, an event then kicks in to go and respond to that user action. In our case, what gets the ball rolling here? If we look this up, it's the user actually typing into the text box. So, I don't press enter, I don't hit the mouse or anything. As I type, that list appears. So if we look at the HTML, that's what this says. On key up. That's one of the events. And, and if you've seen any JavaScript before, there was, there was an on load event, there's an on click event, there's an on mouse over event. event. One of the events is on key up. There's actually two events associated, there's several events associated, associated with key pressing. There's a uh, uh, on key down and on key up. So you can actually do something different when they press the key down versus lift it up. All right. In this case, the one that we want is we want the character that they've just typed, so we're going to use the on key up event. So, on key up, we're going to call this function called get words and we're going to pass it this dot value. What does this dot value mean? It's just what you just typed, right. In more formal terms, anytime in computer uh, programming where you see the word this, it means whatever thing we're talking about right now. All right. So in this case, we're talking about that text box. So when I say this dot value, I mean the value of the text box. All right, so we're going to call get words and we're going to pass it the value of this text box. All right. 
And that's this function right here. All right. Now, let's look at this function. But before we look at this function, we have this little snippet of code up here that could be put in uh, an external file. What this is, is this is creating the pipeline between our client and server. All right. Those HTTP objects, HTTP, HTTP, and HTTP2, are objects that represent the request and the response between the client and the server. Okay? Think of it as a pipeline between the client and the server. We use that function, create request object, because depending on what browser you have, there's a different syntax to create that object. If you are using Internet Explorer, you create that object this way. If you are not using Internet Explorer, you create that object this way. The rest of this doesn't have any sort of uh, special code for either, either kind of browser or any kind of browser. The only thing we have to do is that pipeline is created in a different manner depending on whether you're using Internet Explorer or not. That's what this function does. It says, hey, create request object, that gives me a pipeline. And it gives me a pipeline based on what kind of browser it creates the, the pipeline properly. Now notice that we have two different request objects. The reason for that is we're actually going to make two requests from the server. The one kind of request is as I'm typing in. As I type in and as I press a key, I'm requesting the server to give me a list of words that match what I've typed in. The other request that we're making the server is when I click this go button to go and get the Spanish translation. So there's actually two requests we're making to the server. One request gives us back a list of words. One request gives us the value of the word or the translated value, rather, of the word that we've selected. So that's two requests. One gives me a list. One, one gives me a list as I type. One gives me the translation when I press the click, when I press the button. So this one represents typing and getting a list. This one represents getting the value back, getting the translated value back. Now, what are we doing here? First thing I do is I make sure that there's something typed in there. All right? That there isn't just a bunch of spaces in there. Because, like, if there's something in here and I delete it, whoops. There's something in here and I delete it. I want to get rid of the things that were already there. So the first thing I do is I look to see if there is nothing in the text box. And if there's nothing in the text box, I wipe out anything that happened to be left over from the drop down. All right? That's not the interesting part. The interesting part is, part is here. All right? Where I say HTTP open, that is doing this job, this is formatting the request and making the request of the server. So, what do I want to call? I want to call the script dictionary1.php question mark word equals and then I want to fill in the value of the word with the value of the text box. Well, that's exactly what I said I needed the URL to be. Dictionary1.php question mark word equals blank. Whatever it is that I want to look up. So here, I'm forming that expression. 
I'm saying I'm going to make the request, I'm going to pass the values via the query string, and what I'm requesting is this. This is saying what function I want to call when the server is done. And this actually makes a request. The A in AJAX stands for asynchronous. Asynchronous means not at the same time. All right. Think of it like leaving a voicemail message as opposed to having a phone call. Normally within Java, script, the function calls are like making a phone call and talking to someone on the other end. You ask them a question, they give you the answer immediately. This is more like leaving voicemail for someone. Because we make this request, we don't know precisely when the server is going to respond. That's a whole other machine. We don't know when it's going to get back to us. Just like if we called someone in a different building. We don't know when they're going to get back to us. All right. So therefore, we make this request and we sort of leave our callback number. Hey, when you have an answer for me, call this number. Except in this case, it's not a number, it's a JavaScript function. And so, when this request is finished, it's going to call this JavaScript function. Alright? Now, the one thing I say to a lot of my students you want to test to make sure you're formatting the request right. And you can do that very easily by sticking an alert in here. And taking that URL that you're calling and seeing, is it calling the script I expect it to? And yeah, that looks like what I would expect it to be. All right. So I know that I made that request correctly. I've already tested to make sure that if the server gets a request that's formatted properly, it's going to return the proper data. So I really only have one more thing to test, and that is the getting back and formatting of the data. So, how do we know when this process is done. Well, unlike voicemail messages, the server sends back messages as it's working through your problem. All right, so it doesn't simply say, here's your answer. You actually get status updates that's saying, hey, the question has been sent. The server has gotten it. The server's preparing the response. Here's your response. So you sort of get little mini status updates. You're only going to have data to do something with when the server is completed. And that's what corresponds to the ready state status of 4. That ready state status of 4 means the server finished its job. So every time the status changes, this create DD gets fun uh, function gets called because that's the function that we told this request to call every time the status changes. All right. But we're not interested in all those little intermediary steps. We only care about the last step, that is, when the servers return the results. And therefore, we look when that answer is equal to 4. Now, what do we do once the answer is equal to 4? Well, we're going to do something very similar to what we did last week with Yahoo. All right? That is, we're going to parse the XML that we get back from this. All right? This isn't going to be an RSS feed, though. It's going to be in a different format. All right? And we're not writing PHP code to parse it. We're writing JavaScript code to parse it. And we're not producing a table. We're instead producing a dropdown. So, what we're doing is we grab the result, this response XML represents the results that we got back from the server. We grab particularly those item tags 
because each item tag in that resultant XML corresponds to a word and then we loop through them. And each iteration through the loop we actually create an option for our drop down. So we dynamically create an option for our drop down. All right. I had some debugging code here where I also created a table. You can ignore that. I just did that just to, to demonstrate. Um, visibly show the output for it. In fact, let me get rid of that code. So, what does this say again? When I've gotten the final answer from the server, I'm going to point to the drop-down and clear it out. I'm going to grab all the items that are in my XML file. I'm going to loop through them all and I'm going to pull the word and the index and I'm going to create a drop-down that contains those. So, if I go in and type I'm going to grab all the item tags. Remember, each item stands for a word. And I'm going to create a drop down. The display value of the drop down is going to be the word. The index is going to be the value of the drop down. So, for example, in this case, I go and type in C. It pulls all those words and it created a drop down and it created an option for each of those. This is simply a different way to show a drop down. You can show, you can put a size on a drop down to show, uh, instead of only showing one value, you can show multiple values. Now, this is probably the trickiest code in this example. Alright? All these Ajax examples are going to have the same three pieces in it. And again, the details of those are going to vary, all right, depending on the particular problem. But somehow, the client is going to format and make the request of the server, and it's going to format the request in a manner that the server expects. So, for example, in this case, it expects the request to look like that. It's going to make the request. And then it's going to wait for the server to tell the client that it's done. The server is going to take that request information, do whatever processing it needs to do, and return back some data. In this case, it's returning a chunk of XML. It doesn't have to be XML, but in this case it is going to be XML. When the server is finished, it notifies the client saying, hey, I'm done. In which case, the client's going to take that data and process it. All right. Getting back to the screen. Here we're making the request using those HTTP objects that we've created here. The server side code does its thing when it's done, it outputs the XML. The client gets notified of that update. When that status is equal to 4, it knows that it's done, and it can go loop through that XML and create the drop-down. Now, the last piece of this is once we've picked our item and click Go to get the translation. Well, that's a different PHP script, right? Because remember, that first PHP script corresponds to, you give it a list of characters, it'll give you the list of words in the glossary that match it. This one says you give it the number of a word in the array, it gives you the Spanish translation of it. So let's look at how that works. We have an on click button or on click event on the button that says get translation. 
get translation, goes and looks and finds what the selected value is of the drop down. The selected value of the drop down corresponds to the position in the array. So whatever value it gets from that drop down, it's going to call dictionary2.php and pass it that as an index number. So same as before. First of all, we validate to make sure that something's there. If there is something there, we're going to format the request dictionary2.php index equals and we're going to use the index of that we're going to use the value of that drop down because that's the position in the array. That's the index in the array of that. So, for example, calculus is what? Calculus is, we could count, probably like position 33 or 34, right? Because that says 37, but there's a couple of extra lines at the beginning. So when I click calculus, what gets passed to the server is probably like 35. And then it pulls the Spanish translation for it. Now I can go and do this to test this script. And that shows that if you give the index, it pulls up the Spanish translation. So, we set a different callback function. In other words, when this request is done, we don't want to create the dropdown. We want to display the translation. We do the same thing in this display translation. We wait until that ready state, that status equals 4, indicating that it is done processing. The only difference here is, because we're just getting back the translation, we're not getting back a list of things, we don't have to loop through it. And in fact, it, we don't get back XML, we simply get back plain text. So we grab the text that we get responded, and we display that in our results div. So we display in there the translation. Now again, this is a lot to absorb in one example. Alright? The key points is, uh, the key points of this is that there is a more involved interaction between client and server. The client and server each have their own roles and each do part of the job. Alright? In a traditional web environment, when a request is made, the server does its thing and returns back a web page. In these AJAX examples, the client makes a different kind of request to the server, and it doesn't get back a complete web page, but gets back a piece of data. That data then can be formatted any way we want to, to display on the page. That's probably why I did that example with a table, just to show you, hey, we could format this data as a table. We could format this data as a, um, a drop-down, all right, however we want to format it. The server's job is just to give the data. The client then decides how the data is going to be displayed. Again, this is particularly advantageous when we talk about mobile because Displaying a page in a mobile website is apt to take longer than displaying it in a desktop environment. Simply because of the, the limitations of the mobile device, the limitations of how people typically connect to the web with their mobile phone. They might not have as good a connection as they would with a, a desktop device. Again, the other thing is this allows us to harness the server for some of our processing while what the user sees is completely HTML documents. So we could go and we could do a PhoneGap build on this. 
All right. Now you don't have any assignments dealing with this, but the concepts that we talked about here are fair game for the final, just as an FYI. All right. We're liable to ask uh, some questions, or it's possible for me to ask some questions about this uh, on the final. Do you have any questions concerning this? The Ajax is the whole dance. The Ajax is, is the interaction. Yeah, that's a key part of it because what this is, is this is a different kind of request. It's not a plain old HTTP request like when you click a link. So um, really, the thing that makes it Ajax is, number one, we make our request to the server this way. Number two, the client makes a request the server responds not with a whole page, but with a piece of data, and the client formats the output. That's AJAX. That, so, so AJAX isn't like a language or, or an object or a framework or anything like that. AJAX is sort of a methodology for developing pages that is different, that involves getting pieces of data and filling in pieces of the page by the client and server interacting. And again, um, well, it's not particularly a mobile um, uh, technology. It sort of works well. It's sort of, there's some cool aspects of it when we talk about mobile development in this. Other questions? I will zip up this example and put it on the web. I will then go and get the evaluation for you to finish. I will need a volunteer to take it up to BU211. Someone volunteer? All right.